Hey there, innovators and investors. Today in the Tediverse podcast hosted by NF10. We're diving into the digital deep end and digital compass, navigating the transformative world of blockchain and real estate. And our guest today is Jess Kanak. Welcome, and here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Today in the Tediverse with NF Ted in the NF Ted Studio of the Tediverse. Welcome to our second episode of what's going to become a nightly uh, once we get organized. And uh, this week we have our re returning guest, Jesse Canuck, who I will introduce in just a second. But in the meantime, I would like to introduce myself as I make my way to the chair. And I will mention that uh, I am a realtor with a uh, real broker located in Las Vegas, Nevada, and a broker associate in Miami Beach, Florida. I am also a Proppy Crypto Certified Agent and the first meta agent um, to have any kind of uh, space like this for us to have our podcast from. So without further ado, let me bring Jesse out here and we will get going with our podcast. Jesse. All right, Jesse, why don't you come on out and uh, introduce yourself and we'll get down to it for this episode. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jesse Canuck, Gay Canadian Kid, and I am a real estate agent from Brick Luxury and Living down here in Cancun, Mexico. Great to be here, Ted. Once again in the Tediverse, I am, as you can see, slowly adjusting and uh, getting used to how it works here. Do you like my new uh, outfit? There, yep. Yeah, uh, looking pretty sharp and. Um... Looks like I figured out how to sit down as well. So we are in good shape. All right. So um, what? Uh, what? Like what? This? What that? Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, so what's new, Jesse? What uh, what have you been up to in the last week? And uh, what uh, what do you have to share with us this week? Well, there's been a lot of things happening down here. In Ted, uh, as you know, also crypto is moving ahead in the world with a lot of things happening with the regulations, uh, with the security exchange commissions as well. Um, specifically here in Mexico, uh, tra train rail travel is making a huge comeback in the in a big way. In fact, uh, the president of Mexico committed to increasing more rail travel around Mexico, so that's pretty exciting as well. Uh, he announced it was in the papers on uh, sorry September 20, 2023, that he's going to commit to returning passenger train services in Mexico, which is going to really expand a lot of the tourism zones that people are going to be able to reach to. And there's going to be new undiscovered places to explore here in Mexico that you can go by train. What about you, Ted? What's, what's new in the Tedverse with you? Well, I tell you what, let's, uh, b before we jump into some of the stuff that I want to talk about, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what you just mentioned? I wasn't really aware, as I'm sure most people aren't, that uh, there, there was an interruption in train service. And, and how, how does that impact um, uh, the things that you, you can do down, down in Mexico? Well, I can basically quote the president himself, and he actually said that it was totally abandoned. And he told one of his governors uh, that is known, well, it's it's in the city of Isthmus, and it's also known, it's going to be known as the rail city. But uh, there was no longer a railway because of the, uh, well, corruption, irresponsible, or neoliberals, uh, they put an end to the railways, especially the passenger trains back in the day. So he said uh, he's going to come up with a comprehensive rail project, and, and they've already got the Mayan train scheduled to uh, begin its inaugural journey here in, <clears throat> in December. So that's going to be pretty exciting. So they're going to be expanding interoceanic waves, uh, sorry, routes with that one. Uh, so that's pretty exciting to see that 
railways making uh, the rail travel is making a comeback in a huge way. So where 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 does the train? Uh, I mean, th this is probably a little bit uh, down the road, right? Where, where's where's the train going to go to and from? Great question, Ted. I'm glad you asked. So it's called the train Maya, and this has been in uh, construction since December of 2018. Where it's supposed to start is uh, all the way over in Palenque, which is in the state of Chiapas, uh, Mexico. And then it goes over into Tabasco, which is the neighboring state. So it's going to have two stops there in Boca del Cerro and El Triunfo. And then it's going to make its way into the state of Campeche, and it's going to have three stops there in Escarcega and CF Campeche. And, oh, this one's a tough one, Ted, because I've learned that in Mayan, X is pronounced as a SH sound, so Shkujil, I'm going to guess. And then uh, <clears throat> it carries on into the state of the Yucatan, where it's going to have, uh, well, 4.5 stops because there's going to be a stop right on the border of Quintana Roo going into Cancun. And then it's going to head south in Quintana Roo, the state of Quintana Roo. So it's going to make stops at Puerto Morelos, Playa del Carmen, Tulum. It's going to have uh, a special stop going to Coba, where the, the um, Mayan temple is located also. So there's Coba and there's also Chichen Itza. So Coba is one closer to Tulum. It's going to carry on south to Felipe Carrillo Puerto and into Bacalar and Chetumal. And Bacalar has become a really, really popular spot for people to go to because that's lots of lagoons and cenotes and just beautiful areas. In fact, people go there to dig up some of the mud that's in the lagoons because of the sulfur that's there. And then they put it on their, their skin and they can charge like $100 for a small um, container of it. It's pretty incredible. But yeah. That that, that train is going to go all the way around the state there, and it looks like uh, the president wants to continue with the train and, and encourage people to do more travel by train. Be cool. Well, that uh, that stop at Tabasco sounds pretty hot, and um, uh, it, it also sounds like your one of those stops is going to be in, uh, reasonably close to your neck of the woods, so uh, people would be able to get on the train from their property uh, that you've just sold them, right? Oh, 100%. Actually, there's a lot of investors that are looking forward to taking the train from Cancun to wherever they've invested because it's going to obviously be a lot more comfortable travel because let's say you are stuck in traffic. Well, for example, there's 250,000 cars going daily on the highway from Cancun down to Tulum. So if you do get stuck in traffic, it's no fun. But if you're on a train, you got a food uh, cart. Or, uh, sorry, you got, yeah, a food carriage. You got a drink carriage. So you got the Wi-Fi. You'll be able to work. You'll be able to avoid all of that traffic congestion as well. So it's going to make travel way more convenient, especially for the modern traveler especially somebody that's got a computer and has a report due before he goes on vacation and decides to go a couple of days earlier and just has to make some corrections using Wi-Fi. Pretty cool, that's huh? That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's really great. And uh, maybe you can uh, put some of the information on some of that that we just talked about in the comments section below for when uh, people might look uh, wherever they're, they're going to be seeing this, this broadcast. Um, and I'll, I'll do the same on some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about. Um, and so uh, I, why, why, don't, uh, why don't I bring up a couple of things that I'm pretty excited about that are, are coming up that hopefully people will be interested in and want to find more uh, about. And uh, one of those happens to be uh, with the company that I work for, Real Broker, uh, one of the fastest uh, new brokerages uh, within the last couple of years. And we've just crossed over... 12,000 agents. Uh, I'll, I'll put a bunch of information on the company I work for uh, in the comments section in case people are curious what a uh, tech and agent-centric agent uh, brokerage can offer these days. But uh, we've got our second convention called Real Rise coming up 
uh, this weekend, the 22nd to the 24th in San Diego. And uh, I'm personally super excited to to connect with a lot of these forward thinking agents that have uh, decided to advance their careers and, and come aboard uh, a, a tech forward, a tech thinking real estate company like this. Um, uh, so uh, super excited about that. Uh, I've been with this company for going on a couple of years now, and um, it's really kind of a breath, uh, a breath of fresh air, um, not just uh, compared to a lot of the other companies out there, but uh, the, the other ways that uh, an agent can derive income uh, aside from uh, selling real estate, which we all know is, is likely to, to, uh, to slow down quite a bit over the next uh, six to 12 months, depending upon interest rates and location. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, what else you got, Jesse? Well, I think that's pretty incredible. Good for you, Ted. Way to stay active. Um, I've got lots of questions for you about cybersecurity, what I brought for you today, because um, I like what you mentioned. Today's agent is becoming more than just a real estate agent. They're um, multi uh skilled right so they have to be a little bit protective of people's data um, information so i've got a lot of questions about cybersecurity that maybe you can help break down for the audience um what do you say ted sure now that's uh that's really kind of a great great segue to part of the reason why we're here and uh one of the other things i wanted to mention uh and it has to do with uh Web3 and this, pro, this this company called Proppy that I continue to bring up. Uh, and, I, and I do because uh, for, I'd have to give Proppy a lot of credit for why I'm here, why we're here having this conversation in the Tediverse about the future of real estate. And so uh, this, this space that we're talking from is, is the first of its kind uh to to enable people to basically immerse themselves uh into a website and walk around and just uh, have a whole different kind of website experience but along with with that part of the conversation uh goes the web 3 aspect of it the the next version of the internet which is going to answer a lot of questions that you have about people's data and security and and how to protect yourself and and uh, make sure that the things that you want to happen are are actually happening, especially when it comes to uh, transferring property back and forth, uh, as well as uh, data and currency. So, uh, all right, Jesse. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I do want to bring up now that we're talking about it, and there will be more information in the comments section below, but uh, Proppy is also having a... Uh, a an AI and Web3 Summit in Miami Beach on November 3rd, uh, and we'll have information on that in the comments section as well. But uh, that was really great last year. Uh, it's going to be, it's just going to be amazing this year too with the, the speakers and all the people that are involved in, uh, in the next iteration of the internet, which is going to include um, securing uh, property data, uh, as well as people's information and the way everything is is secure and encrypted, uh, it's going to prevent a lot of the, the the frauds that are being perpetrated and and easily done uh, on our current version of the internet and especially uh, in email. So uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, ask me some questions, Jesse? Yeah. Well, I think a lot of your followers have a pretty good idea about computers and how things work, but we need to broaden the uh, horizon for a lot of people that want to learn because it's a little bit, um, you have to be vigilant out there. You have to spot your threats. You have to be aware of things that are you could be vulnerable to because it's the same thing as walking down the street as walking into a computer and utilizing it. If, uh, say, forget, say you use a public computer, forget to erase your history, well, someone goes to your Hotmail, guess what? They could log in. So tell me um, a little bit about, let's break it down real simple for 
for everybody, Ted. What would you say cybersecurity is to everybody? Like, if I could give you an example, basic cybersecurity is maybe remembering to change your password maybe once a year for some people, right? Well, I mean, cybersecurity is, is I mean, the, um, the, the question you're asking isn't so much about cybersecurity so much as what you can do to protect yourself uh, uh, from anything bad happening online. And so I, I'd have to say the answer to that question has to do with a basic understanding of, of the right way to do things and uh, and what things to avoid. You've mentioned a couple of them, which are easily um, resolved by using a, a VPN uh, on, on your device, wherever you happen to be logging in uh, from a public place. Uh, and there's a variety of other things. As a matter of fact, I've written um, an ebook, which I'll also put a link uh, for, which is, is geared to answer a lot of questions that, uh, that you probably have now. Uh, and I, I actually put it together uh, for people to be able to give their parents, uh, you know, because personally I'm afraid uh, that I might get a phone call that, uh, you know, some, especially with all the AI uh, right now, that somebody clicked on something or they sent money because I was, I, I was in a hospital or I was in jail or something ridiculous. Um, and so uh, it's important to, uh, to protect the people that we know uh, from, from clicking on suspicious links or, or replying to emails they shouldn't reply to uh, due to malware and phishing and, and those kinds of things. And this has really become the new normal because since the beginning of 2020, the push, um, the push for things to happen digitally has happened really fast. And there's been a lot of people learning the hard way about the new normal. So, for example, like businesses, um, like we've seen an increased amount of people doing scams, um, use, utilizing AI. But nowadays, people have to be a little bit more aware to spot, wait a minute, that's not the exact same website. It doesn't end in .com. So maybe those are the best things to look for, things that don't look like the real website. Would you agree with that, Ted? Yeah, well, I think people have become complacent. People have become used to the current version of the Internet. And, and I'm not just talking about you know, regular people, I'm talking about the bad actors as well. And so um, it's, it's important to, to understand the, the, the landscape of, of where we're at too, um, as far as the current version of the internet, also known as Web 2, and the next version of the internet known as Web 3, which encompasses uh, a number of different layers and, and features and encryptions that 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 are going to prevent um, all the things that we're talking about, all the all, all those scammy emails and and everything like that. There's going to actually be a Web three where people are not going to have to do their own. Like people are still going to have to be vigilant, though, right? Ab absolutely, but the 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 way that things are set up on Web three versus Web two, uh, the, the the current version is people are going to have a lot more control over not just their data, but what, uh, what the websites that they log into are going to have access to, what kind of information, you know, a lot of, especially with what's going on right now with, with no national law preventing companies of a certain size or, or anybody really from uh, using people's data in a way that, uh, if they knew about, they wouldn't approve or be happy about, which is kind of what's going on right now with all the data scraping, not just by bad actors, but by all these companies we're talking about uh, to, to, to gather all that data together uh, and, and, and either sell it to other companies or use it themselves to determine the kind of things that we see on their platforms. So 
You're looking at other people's platforms? I, I, tell me again a little bit about that, Ted. Well, I mean, any, any platform that, that we, we use and log into, whether we're talking about Facebook or Zillow or, or a, a, any of the webs, Amazon in particular, you know, whatever site we log into, uh, every keystroke that we enter is, is collected and analyzed, and, and then those those analytics are uh, are matched against advertisers that uh, that pay these companies to to uh, either be put in front of us or uh, that will get our data, our contact information, or preferences or whatever, and and then either retarget and follow us all around the internet or or we'll start getting postcards in the mail or or see banner ads in in margins of websites we're on it's really um out of control and those are just a few examples that we know about um, that are most common there's all kinds of of nefarious things that are going on behind the scenes and like i said people have become complacent to all of this just because They've been become comfortable with the way the internet works, and it's not gonna. The internet isn't really the way the internet works. Isn't going to change moving forward from Web two to Web three, but it's going to become a lot more difficult for people to get access to data that 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 doesn't belong to them or that belongs to somebody else. So it's. Uh, so it, putting a little bit more power in the people's hands right like i noticed uh apple now starts asking you when you download a new application it asks you would you allow this app to track you obviously you can say yes ignore it whatever or you can take power in your hands and decide okay i don't want to be tracked is that what you're saying kind of Ted? so then in the new web 3 these things will have better checks and balances to protect the, the web server, correct? Yeah, so um, the, when, when people, like I said, people have, have gotten used to the way things are. Um, and, and if they knew uh, about some of the dark side of, of what we use on a regular basis, and and so one example I'll give is um, Facebook, for example. Uh, when, when you are, are looking around at whatever it is you're looking at, and, and maybe you like something or maybe you share something, um, not only is, is that registered with the website as a preference, but your, all of your contacts uh, information is also sort of attached to your view of that and then then their algorithm will will attach to to your contacts data as well in, in an effort to to see if they can place that ad in front of any uh, anybody in your circle and, and it, it's it just it's infinite from from there all the all of the tentacles that the, the data that they're scraping um, connects everybody by now that can also be used for good, right? Not saying that it's used for bad, but let's say somebody wanted to do a real estate transaction and they wanted to keep track of every transaction or step along the way, like contacting the lawyer, contracts, maybe their title and deed. Is it possible that in Web3, somebody could actually do this with real real estate? and then keep track of things in like a, a virtual space like this ted well i mean you're 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 bringing up a pretty good point and and as this transition uh um, continues there there will be accommodations made for communicating and, and where we're going is certainly going to be different from where we're at now but uh as as people create new accounts that are attached to wallets then um they're going to be in a lot more control over <clears throat> like i said when they log into other websites what kind of 
data and information will will be saved and seen now for for real estate transactions for certain uh for certain shopping transactions sure it's convenient um, i'm gonna i'm I'm going to kind of separate those two because, you know, when you're shopping, um, while it, it is helpful sometimes, uh, w- what happens if you end up buying the thing you were shopping for and then you continue to see all those advertisements? So, you know, the, the, there, it's, it's a two-edged sword as far as that goes. But as far as real estate goes, we're also going to transition away from email and start doing our communication inside a, a a secure portal of some kind so that no sensitive or private information has to be sent through email. And we're talking about, you know, personal private information like, uh, I mean, it could be a, a bank account number, it could be wiring instructions or, or something like that, that uh, a lot of these scammers like to get a hold of out of out of people's emails. So uh, the system that we're going to be using moving forward and, and probably I think is really uh, getting back to that company, the first company to put together an ecosystem um, where a secure ecosystem where you really don't even need to involve email in the, in the real estate tra- transaction at all, even from the beginning where the offer will be written uh, online on what's called called a smart contract and it's basically just a digital version of a contract that's that's where a real estate transaction really begins and and then when when that uh when that uh uh offer is is submitted it it, uh it will follow a a chain of events uh and everybody who is part of the transaction will be notified when it's their turn to act or somebody else's act uh, all the way up until the conclusion of the real estate transaction, which will then be recorded on blockchain. And so none of that information that I just talked about will uh, necessarily ever show up in an email, uh, which will drastically increase the the security and diminish the likelihood of any any type of fraud or or data leak or anything like that yeah because we are kind of the translator for everybody we are in the day and age where remember we used to have phone numbers everybody had a phone number a landline even now and then we kind of moved into the day and age where email started to replace phone numbers right And now, basically, when people do have a phone call, it's pretty rare, right? Most of our communication is done by text or email or even maybe just a voice note or even a video note. So that'll be very interesting for people to be able not only to have record keeping, but it should be easy for somebody to transfer to somebody else for record keeping as well. So That's something that's very exciting to look forward to. What I'm also looking forward to is also creating a a virtual tour for people so that they can actually sit in their own home, but go to another part of this world and explore and view. And if they like it, they can do a real estate transaction this way, couldn't they, Ted? Yeah, you know, that's uh, that's another uh, great point you bring up uh, about virtual tours and we're not talking about uh, a picture slideshow. We're not talking about a video. Uh, both of those mediums uh, can convey to you sort of what the space looks like, but it, it, it restricts the perspective that you can get. You're, you're, you're restricted to the camera person's perspective to, to see what you want to see, whereas wh- whether we're talking about a 360 virtual tour or uh, something with a a camera by the name of Matterport that does a 3D virtual tour, or even a a higher level piece of equipment, uh, a a Faro or a BLK that that are more accurate for larger spaces and bigger jobs. Um, These last few uh, advances in technology allows people to actually immerse themselves in a space and, and spin around and zoom in and look at every little nook and corner and, uh, and and navigate to the rooms and the spaces they want to 
instead of like I, I just said just a minute ago, uh, being restricted by the, uh, another cameraman's perspective and, and what they wanted to show you. So absolutely. And, and on top of that, because of this technology that we're talking about, um, uh, especially uh, in, in, block, in blockchain Web3 and, and Metaverse in particular, um, not only will we be able to uh, walk around or immerse ourselves in a virtual space, uh, could be through the use of VR goggles, could be on your laptop. Um, it, it's, it's not only going to give people another perspective on how to look at a property, but it's going to enable us to, to actually incorporate the, the transaction functions, including communications, uh, uh, even a video or uh, all kinds of other things inside the virtual space, which is going to make it a lot more convenient for people um, to, to get to where they need to go to find all the, the paperwork, resources, answers, and, and get in touch with the people they need to inside the virtual tour. I think that's absolutely amazing because not only is it going to provide a safe space for them to conduct their daily um, life activities, but it's also going to create an avenue that they can do lifestyle choices as well, vacation properties, anything on top of that. And it's completely linked to a secure way that can be tracked as well. That's amazing, Ted. You know, you uh, uh, while, while we're talking about that too and, and the stuff that we just mentioned, uh, le let's also bring up some of the uh, other advancements that we can incorporate into this whole process. And, and an example of that might be uh, a, a way to manage your own vacation property uh, with an application. So, for example, for some of these builders and developers that you and I deal with uh, and, and are going to be talking to them about this kind of uh, technology, uh, a builder developer in Mexico or in Dubai or anywhere of the other places I travel can, can have an app created. Of course, we can do that with the virtual tour company. And inside the app, we can have uh, not just the virtual sales component of their operation but the the entire property can be managed from what's called a decentralized application and that's just another way of saying a piece of software but this software is built on blockchain and so that's essentially what connects the property that's been recorded on blockchain to being able to do things with it digitally i mean imagine if you will you buy a property the way it's done now and you get a deed um and some and you want to rent your property out what are the next steps well you have to figure everything out either find a property manager or learn all the forms and everything you need to do in order to be able to to rent your property out whereas it, something like what i'm talking about it's merely a module or an, or, or a button that has all of that stuff built in. So if you buy a property through one of our developer partners, or for example, through the Las Vegas High Rise app, then, then what's gonna happen is the property will be recorded on blockchain and the new owner can, can do a variety of things as a result, uh, including renting it out, including even you know selling a share of ownership if that's what they wanted to do via NFT. Uh, the, the possibilities are really endless um, as far as uh, the software that can be incorporated into a digital version of the property that you just bought. Really amazing. And I think that I think that's fantastic and it's absolutely the direction that we're going because people are starting to uh, live in a day and age where we do can take control of things. Like I got a lot of clients that don't manage their own properties. That's it, it, it is what it is, right? But there are some clients that like to get into the micromanaging. And what this is going to do, you're right, you're, they're going to be able to check their calendar. And if they want, they can sell each week as an NFT. These NFTs can be inter-exchanged, and uh, of course you'll be able to manage it from wherever you are in the world. Absolutely, everything. Everything is, is recorded on blockchain, so 
you you'll always be able to get to the property information you need if if you need to liquidate or you want to sell it, it's really a, a matter of a few pushes of a button instead of having to go to your safe deposit box or wherever you have your your actual deed and then either take it to an attorney or to a title company or what what's that uh that person called down down in in mexico jesse uh the, we're called the brokers is that what you mean <laughs> no uh, the 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 agent that transfers title that's not an attorney uh oh I, it, well, there's a fido comiso because as a foreign investor, yeah, that's where it's held for you. Yes, that that's that's what I was looking for, and there was no chance I was going to remember that terminology. So, uh, <laughs> you, you passed that test. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to cover what that is uh, one of the episodes as well. Well, I'm I'm quite certain that uh, one of the the, mm -hmm. the next time we we talk, uh, uh, we'll, we'll discuss um, uh, one of the projects that you guys are uh, selling and representing currently that uh, some of the audience might like to know more about. There are definitely going to be people that are looking uh, for uh, foreign investment properties. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so uh, we'll, we'll definitely be talking about that. Well, I tell you what. Um, I'm not sure what your time is looking like. I know we've we've covered a lot in a short period of time. Uh, period of time this uh, this week, but uh, is there anything? Do you have to get going, or is there anything else you want to cover before we wrap up for today? I do, unfortunately, have to get going, Ted. I do have to meet another client who is doing exactly what you said, where they live up north in the U.S., and they are tired of winter coming and them looking at the snow falling. So they are at that point in their life where they want to purchase a property down here in Mexico, and they're going to let it be a vacation property for some of the time that they're not using it. And it would be great to guide them through it. We've had that experience with a lot of clients. I've been doing it personally myself for the last eight years. Uh, with Brick Luxury and Living, we've been doing it for the last three years as a, a company with a team. And it's been a great experience meeting people. And it, it's amazing how you truly end up becoming a lot of these people's friends, uh, your clients. They, first, they go from just a cold lead to uh, a, a client, and then they end up becoming friends as well because, let's face it, when they come down here, um, it's six months of just enjoying life and enjoying everything around. And remember, people enjoy a great experience, so I've had the fortune and the pleasure of working with some great people, and they've recommended that I work with some of their friends as well. So it's the gift that just keeps on giving, as they say. Right, Ted? Yeah, you know, I think it's it's pretty interesting too that uh, um, everybody knows a ton of real estate agents, right? But the the kind of relationships that you make with uh, a a foreign broker like yourself versus the kind of relationship you make with somebody who's local and in your town is is kind of a completely different relationship. Because, like you said, when you travel somewhere else. You, you, it's nice to have a friend and to know somebody there, but, but locally speaking, man, I don't, I don't know if, if real estate agents should try so hard to be everybody's real estate friend anymore. I think, <laughs> you know, it, I think it's just getting tiresome with so many agents, and and uh, you know, it's going to get tough over the next uh, several months with uh, you know high interest rates and and supply low supply and consumer sentiment, but. Uh, anyway, we'll we'll wrap up on on that note and talk about that a little bit next week. And uh, thanks again, Jesse. Really appreciate your uh, your support in in this endeavor. And uh, look forward to speaking with you next week and uh, hearing about uh, your your brokerage. Maybe we can even talk uh, Ruben into coming on the show and uh, and uh, talk about one of the projects that you guys are are uh, are pitching right now. That would be fantastic to share a little bit more about some of the things that we're working on down here in Mexico. There's some pretty exciting things. A lot of people enjoy the turnkey experience when they make a, an investment. It's something that, as a satellite landlord, they don't need to worry about at all. It's 
rather popular. It's good. Uh, be my pleasure to share that with you. And it's always a pleasure to come back onto the show, Ted. And uh, on that note, I'm going to do a celebratory reaction. So here I go. And I'm dancing on the couch. Call me Tom Cruise. <laughs> okay, Tom Cruise. Well, thanks very much. Uh, really look forward to uh, to next week's show and what we can talk about. And uh, thanks very much, everybody, for tuning in. We are going to be going nightly uh, as soon as we can get a little bit more organized. And uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Look forward to, uh, uh, to seeing you again soon. <laughs>